Blessed are the people longing for another star. Blessed are the people wanting for another heart. For theirs is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And all the people said, Amen. Oh, oh, oh. and all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. And all the people said, Amen. Oh, oh, oh. and all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Daniel. What a nice way to start us off. Amen. I saw so many emojis going by. People yes. were loving it. Loving it. Good morning. Um, we've got folks from here all the way to Colorado, all the way to Norway watching today. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's exciting. And we have some people in the room. Some people in the room and Noah who went off site to help uh, Joni get connected. So, Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's all coming together here Sunday morning. Um, oh, our camera's not working. Let's try oh, it again. Shoot. Oh. That happens. Hold on a sec. There we go. Last uh, Sunday, last day in January. And about uh, three degrees. <laughs> I saw somebody post this morning, I'm not going outside until the temperature is higher than my age. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. We're going to be waiting for a little while. Well, then you got it? someone like Josh, our friend, who's a runner, and he ran more miles than the temperature was when he started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I think he did 12 miles, and it was 11 when he started. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. We're glad you're here. Uh, we hope you feel the presence and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit binding you together with uh, the community of faith, which is here and scattered all over, all over. The way the service is going to go this morning is that we'll have a quick prayer and then a time with the children. We're going to have fun on the time with children. Um, and then a piece of special music from Daniel in Illinois. Uh, we'll continue with our five questions in five minutes series. Uh, this morning we have Dee and Brad Kaimach uh, from up on North Street visiting us uh, just to check in with them and do a little bit of that visiting that we do when we're at the building that we haven't been able to do. After that, we will have a scripture lesson and a message, a time to uh, share our gifts with God, our financial gifts, time of offering, and then announcements and celebration and thanks. And then at the very end, uh, we'll do the pastoral prayer. This gives you the entire worship service to drop comments um, for things that you'd like us to pray for. Um, so you have that time and we'll look at them all at the end to create a prayer of the people. And then Daniel will sing us out and we will say amen again. All right. The plan? Yeah. What? Uh, during the sermon, Rachel's going to ask you for some comments on something. So yes, yes, yes. Make we, sure your fingers are ready. We're going to be crowdsourcing. <laughs> Hive mind. Hive mind. Yep. Okay, so let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we are grateful to be gathered together this morning in spirit. We're so thankful for this community of faith, which encourages us along the way, not just with friendships and support, God, but with encouragement in our faith life. God, we ask that you would use this time to build us up and to give us strength for all that uh, must be done for um, the challenges that we have around us in this world. And so that we can go out into the world, uh, better reflections of your love, God, that we can continue to spread your good news of uh, the love of Jesus Christ for everybody as we go away from here. God, we ask that you'd help me and Sam and the others leading worship to uh, communicate effectively this morning. And again, we thank you for your presence with us. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So for the kids... I was thinking, shoot, man, this would be such a much more fun children's sermon if we were here in the building together. Because you know what I would like to play with you this morning is follow the leader. Oh. 
Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> play follow the leader. <laughs> <laughs> you know how when you play the follow the leader, somebody's the leader and you go around in a line, you walk around the room and the leader's like, let's hop on one foot. Here, hop on one foot. Oh. Yeah, okay. hop on one foot. Okay. And then the leader's like, oh, pat your head while you walk and you pat your head. And then they're like, walk like a chicken and you walk like a chicken. I already walk like a chicken. You do? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think you walk kind of like a duck. Oh, great. Like that. Yeah, and then maybe walk like a crab, you know, when you get on your hands mm -hmm. and feet and go backwards. Yep. Like that. That's so fun, playing follow the leader. Yes. And so it's your job to keep your eye on the leader and do what the leader does, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that Jesus said to do to his disciples was follow me. And that just made me laugh. Can you imagine if Jesus was like, follow me, let's walk like a duck. <laughs> 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 he didn't mean follow me like that even though they had a good time they were good friends they had many laughs so maybe he did do that one day huh. and they just didn't write about it yeah. they didn't think it was important but the follow me part what does that mean when Jesus says follow me does he mean like follow in a line behind him no um, he means but he does mean imitate me just like how yeah. you do that and follow the leader um, and you know, when I think about the best way, like if I had to do a gesture, and maybe you have one too, a gesture for how to follow Jesus, I'm thinking that Jesus, a Jesus gesture would be like this, looking. I think Jesus was a really, really good noticer, right? Like a lot of times when you're in a- Which is different than a good looker. Oh, he's probably good looking too, yeah, yeah, we'll say yes. We'll say amen. A good noticer. A really good noticer, because lots of times, like, you remember back when we were in rooms with people, in them, you know, it would be the person who was maybe the tallest, or the person who was the noisiest, or the person who, um, I don't know, had the neatest shoes uh, that would call the attention of the crowd. Most people would be looking over at that, you know, fascinating, interesting person. Jesus was always really good at noticing people who were off to the side, who were being quiet. Like sometimes he would walk with his disciples and they would all be talking and there'd be friends and whatever. And there would be somebody way over there and Jesus would be like, hang on, what about that person? Right? One time a woman came up behind him who needed healing and she just kind of snuck in because it was really crowded. And she said, if I could just touch his uh, robe, I know I would be healed. I don't want to distract him. So she just touched his robe and immediately, Jesus noticed. It's a really good noticer. So if we want to play follow the leader with Jesus, maybe one way we could do it is to go like this, right? We could do it for real, but we can also remember, good job, um, we can also remember that Jesus was very, very good at noticing the people around him, especially the people who might have gone unnoticed by most people. You like that? Do you, have a, do you have a gesture for Jesus? Um, I hadn't really thought of I one. put you on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, usually it's this. But Well, there's that. That's yeah. an, <laughs> I don't think Jesus did that, though. No, that would yeah. be anachronistic. It would be. There's a, there's a word for yeah. the children's moment, anachronistic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Use that and your teacher will be like. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, let's have a word of prayer. God, we are people who want to follow your son, Jesus. Help us to follow Jesus by noticing people who are hurting or off to the sides, who are sad, uh, who are not noticed by others, and help us to be kind and friendly to them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All righty. Well, we have a time of special music. Daniel, handing it back over to you. Hello, um, I thought I'd share us another song from my youth group days. Um, some of you in the church might know this band, it's Reliant K. Um, just thought it was a good song for the times, so hope you like it. <laughs> But I feel no movement Can I be free of this unreleasable din? Never under 
Estimate my Jesus You're telling me that there's no hope I'm telling you you're wrong I never underestimate my Jesus Cause when the world around you crumbles He will be strong, He will be strong Throw up my hands, oh the impossibilities Frustrated and tired, where do I go from here? Now I'm searching for the confidence I lost so willingly And overcoming these obstacles is overcoming my fears But never underestimate my Jesus Telling me that there's no hope I'm telling you you're wrong Never underestimate my Jesus Cause when the world around you crumbles You will be strong, you will be strong He will be strong I think I can't, I think I can't, but I think you can, I think you can. I think I can't, I think I can't, but I think you can, I think you can. Gather my insufficiencies and place them in your hands, place them in your hands, place them in your hands. Never underestimate my Jesus Cause you're telling me that there's no hope I'm telling you you're off And never underestimate my Jesus Cause when the world around you crumbles You will be strong, you will be strong You will be strong Thanks, Daniel. Amen. Amen. In the comments. Ooh, falsetto. Well yeah. done. Well done. Daniel, Daniel's an amazing vocalist as well as uh, so many instruments. Thank you, yes. Daniel. Um, I just wanted to give an update on the temperature uh, because we have here a little clock that helps us keep time while we do the broadcast and it has a thermometer on it. It just told me that the temperature in the last 24 hours was negative 0.0. .0. And I'm really <laughs> glad that it, it included the negative because we needed that encouragement. <laughs> Another uh, Facebook note um, for those of you uh, watching, um, if you want to share the service, uh, that would be great. Oh, good, I see Dee and Brad coming in. Um, if you want to share the service, just to hit uh, share so your friends can see the worship service, it's a good way to have people visit church. And another thing, um, uh, since the new year started, sorry, Dee, you guys just hang out and look cute, okay? Um, since the new year started, uh, we've started tracking attendance differently, and I know that doesn't matter a whole lot to you, but I can't see you unless you hit like or love or make a comment or something like that when I go back to see who's engaged in the service. So if you're just hanging out there, um, not interacting, I totally respect that, but if you hit the like button, then your name will appear on the list, and I'll be like, they were in church. Yep. Right? Or, or drop a snowflake emoji. Snowflake emoji, whatever you like, um, but that if you interact with the post, then I'll know you've been here, so... Well, welcome to Dee and Brad. Thank you. We're so glad to have you both here this morning to do five questions in about five minutes, just to check in and uh, see how things have been going. And um, Brad, we appreciate your, your patience. We know that Dee's a member of the church and you are a supportive, loving spouse who encourages <laughs> that. And that, that you're Jewish, correct? And that's, that's just a wonderful yeah. thing. Um, to have a, a couple that can encourage each other's faith this way and be respectful and engaged. And so uh, we really appreciate you being uh, along with Dee on this. 
But from what I understand, Dee's going to do most of the talking. <laughs> you, that's usual. <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to get out of the way, uh, Brad, by way of the or anything like that? I don't think I have a chance. <laughs> no. All right. Well, all right. So, um, st starting right away with the five questions, do you, not everybody watching has met you. So, can you give us just a brief introduction for you and Brad before we start? Sure. Uh, we're Dee and Brad Kynack. We live in North Reading. We have been, I have been a member of Aldersgate since early 2017. And we've been in North Reading for about 11 years. I um, work for an insurance company and Brad is self-employed as an engraver. Yes, Brad makes beautiful things. I think we have a, a wine glass and a mug, a coffee mug. My coffee mug. And a bookmark. The levers of life, the wine, the coffee, and the book. Yeah, all in great. Well, and the bookmark way. has the Millennium Falcon on it, which is pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so Dee, um, since almost a year ago, last March, uh, how has work been different for you? Um, well, I've been home since March 12th was my last day in my office. My office is in Waltham. I work, I'm a compliance officer for an insurance company. And I've been home since the 13th of March last year. So there was no break. We just went from being in the office to the next day being home and no interruption to work at all. So it was a little hard at the beginning because I was trying to adjust to being home with no planning. Plus there was this pandemic. And it was really hard to focus, but it developed a groove. Brad was able to stay open just a little bit longer and then closed like late March and opened like maybe mid-May-ish or around June. So we had that, we were calling it our practice for retirement <laughs> time when we were home together, both sort of doing our own thing. But as far as work itself, um, I don't miss the commute. I'm very vocal on how much I don't like my commute. And I, I'm very, I'm, I'm fairly introverted. So I'm happy being home. I come by myself with the cats all day and that's fine. I, I also find that being home and out of an office atmosphere, I would sit with my office door half closed all day. People walking by, people coming in, I've got the phone, I've got this now. And I would have to, I would have to multitask against all the noise and, and disruption. Now it's so quiet. I just, I can focus on what I'm doing. I, I get much more done. I'm much more productive. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I think Sam's found that too, is productivity. So it's going to be interesting as things, you know, open back up. If workplaces notice a decrease in productivity, people coming back, you know, and send them back home. You did better before. <laughs> It'll, yeah. Or is there still going to be some sort of balance? Um, how are things at home? You touched on this a little bit already, but how have things at home changed for you? For us, it really hasn't been a, a big leap because Brad still goes in and I'm here alone all day. What has been good is that he has been closed on Fridays for a couple of years. We bought a house in Bridgeton right before this happened. So now we have the ability to go up there and have a, you know, a change of scenery every, just about every weekend. So that's been good. But aside from that, um, we're pretty much just maintaining it's there wasn't a big gap a big change like with you guys where you suddenly Rachel had five people in the house with you <laughs> before um, for us it was a really short time and and because we're used to just being here together it, it really wasn't disruptive good good um what's your biggest concern or biggest concerns during this time um it's primarily making sure you know, thinking about Brad's business going, keep keep going, where there's been a shift there. A lot of his customers are feeling a shift in their business, so that trickles over. Um, I also am super worried about my parents because they're um, 79 and 80, and I don't see them that much just to keep them safe. So that's been, I will just worry about something happening to them. And I, so, but I'm excited. I was talking to them yesterday and they're gearing up to get their, vaccinations. So I feel happy about that. So those have really been my biggest concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And I'm glad to hear that good news about the upcoming. I, I just heard it called the Fauci ouchie. The Fauci. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I was like, that deserves to be repeated. That's clever. So glad to hear that's coming up for them. And what about the biggest joys? 
um, being able to go up to me regularly, being able to have more time for us together. Before the pandemic, Brad would teach cycling four nights a week. So he would work all day, go to cycling, come home, we would have dinner and that would be it. Now uh, we're exercising here. We uh, really right away, he saw what was coming. We bought a piece of exercise equipment last April. So we were ahead of the head of the curve there and we're able to stay healthy here but now we have dinner at you know six o'clock or like normal people and we have more time together which which we enjoy so that's been that's been wonderful that's great yeah that we, we had commented that in 20 years we've been married 20 years this month and we've never spent this much time together and thank goodness we like it <laughs> exactly <laughs> thank goodness <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then finally, what are the ways that you've, you have felt best connected with the church during this season? The standard ways through our weekly worship, um, I help behind the scenes. And so it keeps me connected to the worship, setting things up, collecting all your prayer requests, um, dropping links and whatnot through, um, I put up Monday through Friday, the, what I hope are inspirational or thought provoking, or maybe smile provoking posts on Instagram and Facebook. So that is helping me connect with people. I participated in the cook alongs. I tell you, they've been so great, except for deboning a turkey, a chicken, which I <laughs> never do again, but my pizza game has changed for the better. I've been doing those on um, Christmas Eve, candle lighting as a member of the worship team prepping for Lent. And then um, a funny story, I was raised Catholic and I grew up about 25 miles away from here. And I went to a Catholic high school in the city next door to where I lived. So a few months ago, I put a happy birthday note on a friend from high school's Facebook page. Sheila Shedd, who everyone met last week, wrote to me, like, how do you know her? I said, we went to high school together. She said, we grew up together. Like how could two Catholic girls from 25 miles away end up in the same small Methodist church all these years later? So that's a fun, unexpected connection too. Oh, that's great. That's, yeah. great. that's fantastic. Yeah, so, and, and let's highlight that, put a little star by the thing she said first, is that D is one of the admins on our Facebook page. So it is D behind the scenes. When you see Aldersgate say things on the Sunday broadcast, and when you see those memes go up daily during the week, that is all D. We appreciate you and the way that you support tech uh, during this time. Thank you, D. Thank you. Fantastic. And I just, one more just note of personal privilege. Brad has got the coolest glasses. I really, do you have your glasses around your neck right now, Brad? Because you got to show them. Do you? <laughs> Always. Do you these glasses. Do you see that? Like do you there's see a magnet they, right a in magnet. the middle. And I they, think they're bloop. genius. And yeah, they're I so see, cool. I used to see Brad in the parking lot of the Y, like maybe once a month I would be leaving or he would be um, leaving and we'd be like, hey, how's it going? And, and we can't do that anymore. So. Oh, no. One of these days, we'll be back there. But he never loses the glasses. That's what's wonderful about those. They are just brilliant. I've only seen them one other time. Just the only the very smartest and best looking yeah. people wear them. Clicks on Amazon. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. That was fun. It was great. Yeah. You know, we're like a talk show now. It was like we just had some guests. They could come yes. sit over here in the sofa. You know, we could have like a musician off to the side. Yeah. We're turning into like late night. Yeah, that's right. It's our dream come true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'll give Dee a second, but we would love to have you come on, you watching, come on the five and five. Uh, I guess we're just going to keep doing this until we can come back together because there's a bunch of households in the church and... Um, I'd love to have you sign up. I'd love to have you raise your hand and say that you'd like to come on. Otherwise, I will come and tap you, but it, it's just nicer if you say, sure, pick me. So there's a link to sign up for the five and five that's getting dropped by D into the comments, and we'll just have a chat. All right. All right. Calling Miss Cindy Tanner all the way from Linfield to come and read our scripture. Hello, everyone. Rachel, if you give me a thumbs up, it means you, oh, there we go. Perfect. Well, I'm going to continue um, being a guest on your show and um, relating a little bit earlier to your gestures from Jesus. Sometimes I picture Jesus kind of raising their one eyebrow, which I can't do. Um, but I also picture um, the smiling Jesus a lot. And today's reading is from Luke 9, verses 23 through 25a. And it's one of those ones that feels like a riddle. So I'll read it twice. Um, and Jesus said to them, 
if you all want to come with me, you must first forget yourself. Take up your cross every day and follow me. For if you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you want to lose your life for my sake, you will save it. Hmm? And that's where Jesus goes. And you go, wait a minute, can you say that again? And Jesus said to them all, if you want to come with me, you must forget yourself. Take up your cross every day and follow me. For if you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. Nice seeing everybody. Thank, Thank you. you, Cindy. And thanks for the riffing on the facial expressions. Yeah, I love it. That could, that could be a whole nother sermon. You know, what sort of facial expressions did Jesus have? That's a way into the text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, quick word of prayer. God, we ask that you would help me and help us together um, draw out the riddle of this text. Help us apply it each into our own lives. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the car on the way over, I made the kids listen to the song from the cassette tape from back in the day about this verse. There's a salty song. Yeah. And they were not very interested. Oh, how did you play cassette tape? <laughs> no, it's on YouTube now. So oh. you just pull it up on YouTube yeah. and play it. And I realized, and Lucy listened, and, but yeah. Unimpressed, huh? Not big fans. We need to reset that, that lyric. Well, it's Wesley a great did lyric. listen to it because there, I could tell he was listening because there's some pretty cool percussion and it's like a marching kind of, they have the whistle. In there. Oh, I know that. They you know the man come, come after, after me. me. He must deny, deny himself. himself. And it's a Take counterpoint. A Here comes Daniel. Me. Here comes Daniel. I'm just kidding. Daniel, no. <laughs> yeah. That's a great song. This is not in rehearsal. Sorry, people. But that is a really good song. When Rachel told me, she's like, I'm thinking about preaching about this. I was like, oh, doo -doo -doo. got that little earworm yeah. singing the song in my brain. Those songs from your childhood come right back in. Yes. 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 I'm with you. Okay. Can I tell you the first thought that I had this morning when I woke up? Was it about how cold it was? Nope. This, uh, first of all, I d hadn't realized it yet, but I woke up before the alarm, which is always a nice thing because it means you had enough rest. But my very first thought was, is this over yet? <laughs> is the sermon over yet? Or is no. the, the pandemic the over pandemic. yet? <laughs> like, what is over yet? <laughs> is this over yet? And then I thought, oh, it's almost February, though. Like, ugh, you know, one more turn of the stupid calendar and then I thought oh my gosh like great this is this is the way to live right now um we're not supposed to wish away time but like do you ever find yourself um during this particular season wishing it away a little bit just be like can we just get through this like this this has been slow it's been slow. like time flies when you're having fun and not many of us are having very much fun right now right and it's just sort of dragging along well, it kind of depends because we have friends who are essential where they work and the hardware store has never slowed down. It's been busier. Right. So. No, I know. This is me speaking like out of... So maybe you should pick up extra hours at Moynihan. Okay, Kevin, if you're watching. Um, yeah, no, and I recognize that. Like some people are very, very busy. Dee said her work was uninterrupted. I have a girlfriend who works for a video uh, meeting service, Ring Central. Her work is just taken off. You know, some people, you know, and all those day traders... Um, on uh, Robin Hood, they've been really busy disrupting the stock market. Some people have been really busy. Um, so this is just how it's impacted my life, is that a lot of things have really slowed down and just drags. So asterisk, my personal experience. But that's how I woke up this morning. And I found that the times that the days actually go quickly um, are, are few and far between. I, ha I think I've had one day like that in the last two months. Huh. It's just kind of plodding along right? And one of the things that, that occurred to me, this wasn't this morning, but as I was meditating on this text, is that we are really settled into the way life is. Uh, how, however it changed for the pandemic, like again, talk to Dee and Brad, that change happened a long time ago, and we're settled into our rhythm. And the rhythm that we have chosen is reshaping us. It is changing us. And so, once again, we need to be very careful, because this, is, this has gone on so long and will continue to go on for a little while still, that we can't just white-knuckle it, hold our breath through it, and expect to spring back to the way it, we used to be, and we used to operate on the other side. Um, we're going to have to live well in this space, right? And that's something we've known all along. 
So this is where I need your help. When time flies for me, when I suddenly look up at the clock and go, oh my gosh, look at the time. So much time just went by. It is when I am really immersed in something creative, right? When I'm like solving a problem or I'm trying to, to create something like either cooking or sewing or something like that, when I'm really deeply into it. And I wonder, I know you've experienced that type of moment when you're, when you're in that flow space, that creative zone, um, or that um, whatever, you're just captivated by what you're working on or what you're doing, and so that when you look up, all of a sudden the sun is about to set, or all of a sudden somebody's saying it's dinner time. What is that thing for you? I would like to have a list. I want you to put that into, into the chat. Say, say what it is that completely just transports you um, so that you're outside of yourself, you're completely unselfconscious. You are, you have forgotten yourself. What are those things? And so I, I brought props. Oh, well, yay, props. While you guys are typing in, because sometimes it takes a minute or two. Um, I had a really boring job before I, we moved up here. It was at a restaurant, and I had to show people the table where they were going to sit. There's a host in a restaurant. And so I got paper and scissors and just made snowflakes. Would you like to make a snowflake during the sermon? No. Okay. But this was something that gets me in that zen creative flow space. Yeah. And then my friend Gina, she saw one of my snowflakes and was like, could you make 50 of those for me? And so I did. And it took a couple of days, but while I was doing it, I just, I'm in my happy space, making a thing, but only poked myself once. And at, <laughs> at the end, I had all these snowflakes, you know? Right. And like when you're in that spot, like your brain is sort of focused on the project, but it's just, it's relaxing, right? Because mm -hmm. there's just enough focus to keep you attentive to the, the craft of whatever you're doing, um, that you're not worrying about a pandemic or the president or what the, you know, rioters or all the terrible things, you know, the environment things that are going on right now. You're just, it's like your brain is engaged, but it's also relaxed yep. at the same time. What are we getting? We got serving sewing from Sue. Sewing. Um, Danielle serving others. Okay. Bobby stargazing on a clear but warm night. Oh, sorry about that, Bobby. Um, Bonnie Spicer went swimming, skiing, or skating on a pond. Gardening, um, D, embroidery. Carolyn walking on a treadmill listening to The Greatest Showman. Yeah, that, that, that soundtrack is amazing. Gardening from Linda. Caring for animals. Yeah. yeah. A deep cleaning. Annie Berkeley, could you come have some zen at my house? <laughs> Deep cleaning. <laughs> Deep. And you could walk over. So you could get walking over too. I'm kidding. Um, knitting. Knitting. Swimming. swimming. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I was going to mention, Shirley. Um, swimming and a little tiny bit running when I was in way better shape. Um, but you can get to that place exercising. Um, like the first 10 minutes or so is like pure pain. Sort of hate it. Like can't breathe. Like going to die soon. Like panic. That's how I am when I first start running or swimming. But somewhere in there, like your body kind of adjusts and you settle in. We have a, a number of distance runners in this church. And your brain, and this happens with distance swimming too, very similar. Your brain just kind of gets to that place. Mm -hmm. You know, that, like I like the word, I like Zen. That's good. It is. Do Christians have Zen? Jen says, um, Jan's reading a book, Long Car Drive, Walks on the Beach, Music. Right. Alex Tanner being outdoors. Well, good, <laughs> Alex Tanner. Alex Tanner is currently in Norway doing cold weather training. And Alex, you can come on a field trip to Boston, and we're also serving yes. up cold weather. Jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. Isn't it a beautiful thing to forget yourself, to, to immerse yourself in something so fully that that just allows your brain to maybe create and problem solve and and work on a little thing but then the rest of it it's it's compelling enough that the rest of the brain just relaxes and you can forget you forget about what you look like you forget about what people are thinking about you you forget about what you need to do right now and you're just in that that beautiful place of self um conscious what, what is it? Unconscious. Un so, uh, yes. <laughs> right. You're lacking, you're, you're lacking that, that self like, oh, everyone's watching. Oh, God, yeah, you forget so. about it. So I'll tell you the truth. I've been I grew up in the church, and I have heard this verse a billion times. And usually when I hear this scripture verse that Cindy read to us, um, I would hear it as, um, if you would follow after me, you should deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. Right? If you, if you want to live, if you want mm -hmm. Uh, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. 
And to TBH, to be honest, um, that didn't sound really good to me. Like, really? Like, deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Ooh. Every day. Every day. I'm like, oh, that sounds really like I should be a monk or something, and there's definitely no happiness there. Right? You can't have what you want. That's what I was hearing with deny yourself. Oh, it's like that song, you can't always get what you want, but maybe not. <laughs> Dylan, he's on to say, was it Dylan? No, it's Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones, sorry. Um, yeah, it just, it sounded very ascetic. It sounded very, you know, self-denial, crucifixion, not like, oh, yay, let's go follow Jesus. And so I didn't spend a whole lot of time, this is good to know about your pastor, right? Um, didn't spend a whole lot of time thinking exactly about discipleship in these type of terms, because it didn't sound really good. No, if you come to our house, it's not a house of self-denial. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> quarantine 15 and some, so no. But when I read it, and this is what I love about reading scripture over time and repeatedly and again and again, is that it, it, like the Holy Spirit just breathes something new into it. And this time when I read it in this translation, my upstairs Bible, by the way, good news Bible, um, it's a different translation. Instead of deny yourself, it is forget yourself. And somehow it just opened it up for me. And I started to reflect on what it is when you are in a place where you are completely unself-aware, not in that the stupid way, like socially, but like you're just really not worried about your own stuff, right? This is very hard to say this to you while I'm looking at my own reflection in a screen right now, by the way. The world that we live in encourages us to look at ourselves so much and be focused on ourselves on social media, you watch the television, they're telling you why you're too fat, too skinny, too poor, too non-glamorous, too rashy. Too gray. Too gray, all the things. And you're too like, lethargic. Yeah, all the things. <laughs> too depressed. And if you will just buy this, now you will be better, right? right? The world really tells you to focus on yourself and fix yourself because you're a mess. And generally we agree, yeah. right? So what a beautiful thing. Or you're on a Zoom meeting and you're busy staring at yourself. No, that's oh. why I look at the camera because then I don't see myself. <laughs> I just see the camera. Right. Right? Well, if you, that's if you, hard, If you though. look right there, oh. <laughs> right? Just look at that dot <laughs> and you don't see yourself. Oh, maybe I should try that. Does right. that look Does that different? Work? Now I'm distracted by what's... <laughs> anyway, the point is we have a world that calls us to focus back on ourselves all the time. And what Jesus is saying, if you want to really live, you're going to forget yourself. You're going to be so immersed in the, th in the call, the, the tug that God has put in your heart, that creative space where you love to be, the, the running, the swimming, the knitting, the uh, cleaning. That was a good one, Annie. Um, you, th that's an aspect of your personality, right? The thing that pulls you in, that sucks you in. Um, you're going to be so immersed in that God-given personality trait that you have and just living into that and celebrating that and exploring that that you will completely forget about whether, I don't know, you should be wearing transitions lenses right now because it's sunny, right? You will completely forget about that. I don't know why that came to mind. Yes. And that sounds wonderful, that kind of forgetting of yourself. Um, hang on, say something, because I forgot where I was in my outline. I just remembered um, the last time where I felt like, wow, that time went fast. It was at the cook-along with uh, Chef Dave doing the, oh, yeah. the, the chicken under a brick, and all of a sudden an hour has gone by. Or when I we're at Noel's doing the charcuterie board, like an hour just passed just like that, you know? Right. It's really absurd. Um, yeah, because it's, it's a creative space of making something neat, you know? Right, and I wanted to draw a couple of distinctions because as I was meditating on this, there's different ways to have time escape you and go by really fast. Um, what I've been talking about is sort of a, a creative space, right? There's also a more passive way to do that, like binging on Netflix. Anybody? Yeah, you watch... Schitt's you know, Creek? Anybody? You watch 13 episodes in one night, you know? <laughs> hmm. But the time does go by. Um, Reading a book, like, you can definitely learn things, but you're, you're receiving, right? You're on the receiving end um, of the yeah. thought. But your brain is making all the pictures, too. But That's yeah. true, yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking about levels of engagement. Like, when you're in that creative space, um, I feel like the, the brain is, is doing more work, right? You're more engaged when you're doing, like, an art or a yeah. um, craft or a project of some sort versus sort of a receptive space to the... Um, right entertainment. And, and, and then there's, if you're 
totally lose yourself, there's a really, like, if it's too much alcohol, that's not good. Right, well, and that's actually a very real issue right now. You know, people trying to just escape and to pass time and to get out of this mess, right? right? Mm -hmm. The alcohol and drug use, because we've seen um, and, and heard stories about and not even on the news about that kind of use going up. And I think it's people just trying to, to get rid of time right now because this is a lot to get through. So there's ways to do it that are productive and creative and g building on the gifts that God's given you. There's ways to do it that are a little bit more passive, just being entertained. And then there's ways to do it that are destructive, um, that forgetting of self. So um, it turns out that when people spend time doing that creative flow, forget stuff thing, they come up with some really good things that change the world. And you pointed to this this summer, I remember, way out of left field, when you pointed out, because see, there's this thing. I used to be so unaware of pandemics. There's been pandemics, so many. Yeah, we had the Black Plague. Did you know that the Black Plague lasted 400 years? There were waves and waves and waves. I know you knew oh, this. Oh, man. That's of course, terrible. all the nurses in the room are like, duh, Rachel. Um, but yeah, wave after wave in different areas keep popping up. You know how we talk about spikes, you know? And, oh, man. You know, yeah, it just kept happening for 400 years. The peak of the Black Plague was like 1350 or so. Do you want to know what else happened around 1350? A crusade? A volcano? The Renaissance. Oh, look at that. Huh. You think that's a coincidence? Hmm. Hmm. I don't really think so. I think that a lot of people were at so home doing had, their flow. Yeah, you know and they, I mean? they said, hey, let's have a Renaissance fair. And everyone was like, what's that? <laughs> that's right. Let's dress up in costumes. Good Sam. Oh, no, they just called it clothes back then. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sorry, guys. Slap Abby this morning. What about this? J.S. Bach lived during this era. Oh. J.S. Bach, I, I just was when I was researching, both of his parents were gone because of the plague by the time he was 10 years old, Eva, 10. He lost both of his parents. And he lost half of his 20 children. Really? Yes. Wow. And J.S. Bach channels part of that grief into the music that he's writing. Well, and he was amazing. He went, there's a cathedral where they would play a song and it was only played in that cathedral and you could never get the music. He went there twice, went home, and he pirated the music because he just recorded it in his brain. He was that smart. Yeah, Daniel's like that. Yeah. Daniel, you pirate. The beard works too. Uh, Martin Luther, how about that? Mm -hmm. Wrote a mighty, for mighty Fortress is Our God. A lot about, um, there's a whole verse in there about people dying um, and they think that that came out oh. of a reference to people dying from the plague. You mentioned Isaac Newton who sat at home, got in his creative spaces float. Invented calculus. Cause, theory of gravity. Because he couldn't go to college because the college was closed for the pandemic. Right. Oxford. And then um, a little bit more recent, the 1918 flu. Um, Rachmaninoff and Stravinsky were doing some of, of their work right at that time. So when we get into that God-given, passionate place and, do, and forget ourselves, uh, we bring things, God helps us bring things into the world that are really good. I just never, you know, deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow me. Did not sound great until I read it this week and I thought, yeah, that is a gift from God. So just quickly, um, to take up your cross daily, uh, again, sounds super severe and difficult. And, you know, people talk about that. This is my cross to bear. And you're like, that means the thing that God's given you to make you suffer. Is that correct? That's yeah. a way to... Yeah, people see it that way. Yeah. yeah this is, people use that as a, an expression. Um, we have to realize that when Jesus said this to his disciples, he hadn't been crucified yet. So it's a little bit of a strange thing to say. I think this is meant to be read backwards through the lens of the crucifixion. We know that when Jesus picked up his cross, he was going to die that very same day. It wasn't like he was going to now die in three weeks or two years from now. He was firmly aware of his mortality. And that's where I want to go with this, per this phrase. If you're taking up your cross daily, you're saying, guess what I have? I have today. This is what I have. Make it count. Make it count right? Say yes, <laughs> right? Go for it, because this is what you have. And if anything, this pandemic has done is, is help us see how much more fragile our plans are and our lives are. Um, so 
maybe that's a good difficult lesson to get. I think that we're, as a family, as a couple, probably a little bit more ready to say, yeah, let's just go for it. You know, usually you think, oh, no, no, we need to save our money and we need to do this and we shouldn't probably do that, you know, defer, defer, defer. And I think already we've changed a little bit to say, oh, we don't know. Yeah. We do know we have now. Um, so as, as, as a way of liberating ourselves from, um, I don't know, just needing to say, no, we'll do it later, we'll do it later, and, and, and having the freedom to say, yes, we will do it now because God's given us life today. So, in the follow me piece, that's the last part, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, follow me, I did with the kids. That means walk like a duck. No, it means, um, I think the most succinct way to put it, the follow me is stay in the presence of God. If we're going to talk about summarizing the way Jesus lived his life in one phrase, it would be that he was always in the presence of God. He was noticing uh, with because of God, being able to see those who were forgotten, he was able to love and care for those on the margins. He was able to appreciate the beauty around him in the world. He was able to um, serve God and not worry about what the people around him thought about that. If it was correct or not correct, he was just serving God because he was constantly in the presence of God. But out of the three phrases, it was that forget yourself. Oh, hi. Hey, Dee. Dee just joined our meeting. Come on in. Um, so it, it, was, it was that forgetting yourself piece that really opened up for me this week, and that's what I wanted to share with you. So how about this? When it says if you want to have a full and abundant life, if you want to, to gain your life, you will forget yourself, right? What that can mean is that God has put things just into your character, into your makeup, that fascinate you, that compel you, that, that, that drive you. Let's do that. Let's say yes to that. Because as we're living our life right now, we're being reshaped and reformed. Let's, let's use it then. Let's say, no, I'm not going to just zone out on Netflix. I, now, I am loving Schitt's Creek, by the way, and do highly recommend. But that's not going to be all of it, right? I'm, I'm going to intentionally put some time in my life um, to those things that allow me into that creative flow space. Yeah. And be intentional about being in God's presence, mm -hmm. learning more about Jesus, yeah. and giving today all you got. Yeah, I like it. And you plan for tomorrow, but really it's a daily thing, you know. And Annie should come over very soon with her cleaning skills, and she's oh. going to now be the most popular person in the church. <laughs> and she's going to be so close to God, and everybody's going to love her. And I think life just got way better for yeah. Annie today. <laughs> when you first said Annie, I was like, what, like the, the orphan from the musical? Uh, the sun will come uh, out tomorrow? No. All right. Just sharing with you my heart in my scripture study this week. Flow. Create a space. Forget yourself. Okay. Um, now it's time for an offering. Uh, that means that uh, we no longer pass an offering plate here, but in the comments there's a link if you would like to make a gift to the church. We appreciate you very much. We say thank you to those of you who've made pledges to Aldersgate in 2021 so we have some financial plan um, for this year. And um, we're grateful that God has given to you richly so that you can give uh, to, back to God in the church. Amen. And also um, prayer requests, and then we'll get those compiled in an email and... Yeah, we've got about one minute um, to drop in final prayer requests. Yes, I saw someone's dog passed away. It was very sad. Sarah Christine's dog. Oh, I saw that, Sarah. Beautiful yeah. white dog. Yes. Oh, yes. That was just yesterday, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, um, last Sunday we spoke to you about a former music director of this church, Alexis Shukawan, about the passing of his adult daughter, uh, Alex, at 41 years old, Alex had Down syndrome and um, died of complications due to COVID. Um, and uh, we wanted to send a gift, a financial gift to that family to help pay for funeral expenses. And we did that on Facebook, as a, like through the Facebook page, and also some people sent checks to the church. Um, and I think we're at 500, I saw a couple checks this morning, $550 has come in already. Okay. And the church is going to match, uh, not match, but add a little bit um, to the gift. We're going to send it off probably tomorrow. 
um, total it up and send it out. So if you would like to help pay for the funeral uh, for this uh, young woman who's passed away, um, there is a donation link. Uh, and notice that when you go to that link, there's a drop-down menu. You choose special collections. Yeah. Um, and that will we, that's how we know that you want it to go to this. Also, in two weeks from now, Sam was mentioning the cook-along. You get to have another uh, forgetting self moment filming the cook-along. Cake decoration. Um, Jill, yes, you can Venmo Rachel if you want for that, by the way. Yeah, sure, Jill. Yeah, yeah um, cake decoration. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the day before Valentine's Day. You do need the cake made ahead of time. Right, it's the decorating part. Yeah, it's not cake together. baking. It's, it's not, cake decorating. Right. Yeah. So it also needs to be cooled. I'm glad you said it like that because... Maybe I'm making the cake the day before. Yeah. Anyway, there'll be instructions, but we're going to do like um, buttercream frosting, ganache. It's a drip cake with all beautiful. She's going to teach us how to make chocolate sails and spikes and oh, nice. cool stuff. You know, so yeah. it could look super professional. Dip fruit. So this won't be deboning a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we love Chef Dave. He's awesome. But this will be less chicken, more sugar. There you go. Yeah. I was, just a little out of my comfort zone using my kitchen scissors to cut the spine out of the chicken. Yeah, I will just, you know. but it was good. Yeah. It was delicious, actually. Poultry in motion. Jeepers. I know. Okay. I, know. I don't have a retort. I'm going to go talk about cake now. You like that? Um, anyway, so that's. Now I, now I feel crummy. Okay. In two weeks. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> There's laughter here, even if you're groaning at your house right now. Um, that's, in, that's not for two weeks, but there is a link. You can look at it. It's a fundraiser for the church, so you pay to get the Zoom link for that. Going along with that is the February raffle. We will draw it on the night of the cook-along, but you don't have to be on the cook-along to enter the raffle. $5 a ticket for a case of wine, including a bottle that is worth, we looked it up, between um, $100 and $210. Oof. Yes, a very fancy cab from California, um, donated by Laura O'Meara. Thank you, Laura. Um, so pretty nice bottle of wine in that case of wine. And I think there's a $50 Target gift certificate, too. So that's another way to support the church if you um, care to do that. Drawing in two weeks. Okay. I'm going to look at my email for the prayer requests. Yes. For celebration and thanks, I wrote something down over there. No. I think. Um, I wanted to thank the people who've made donations to the raffles that we've been having since October. Um, they, they've generated good income for the church in a creative way, which is important right now, uh, but we've been able to do it because people have donated. That is Camille Connors, Linda Watts, Beth Connors, no relation, um, and everybody who's do donated bottles of wine. So we appreciate you very much um, for allowing those to go forward. That is the celebration, and thanks. Oh boy, y'all have lots of prayers today, which is good. Thank you. No, no, I need this. No, it's all right. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we are grateful for the time that we've had together this morning. Thank you for um, allowing us to feel connected, even though we're apart. I think that we're getting better at it, God. Uh, we earnestly look forward to the time we can actually gather in person, but at the same time, thank you for the community you've created online. Um, God, we know that you know our hearts. We know that you know the prayers that rest there that we have not shared, or maybe that we don't even really understand ourselves. Um, and yet you can perceive those groanings and, and begin to move in our life in response. Um, God, so thank you for receiving our prayers this morning. We pray for those for whom we're concerned, um, again, and, and thinking particularly about the sermon today, for those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction and for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety. God, we ask for healing and for safety. Uh, we continue in prayer for Michael Boucher's father and for Daniel's mom, uh, Barbara Schinnebarger. We pray for Joe Connors, Camille's husband, who has cancer, and for Camille caring for him. We continue in prayer for the Chaguan family, um, grieving after Alex's passing, but also uh, with Alexis with kidney cancer. We pray for Ruth Kennedy's brother-in-law and sister after a traumatic event in their lives and ask for healing. We um, pray for DKIMOX coworker Bill, who's been diagnosed with uh, cancer, and her friend Tom, um, who has COVID and has just suffered a stroke. God, we pray for Michael Boucher's friend, Kurt, uh, that you would give this man healing from his pain. 
Uh, we pray with Annie Berkeley for her friend Mike. Uh, first child will be born today, but the child has a heart defect um, that they will fix. We ask that that would go smoothly and that you would bless the doctors. But to that, we add prayers for uh, Shirley Duggan's friend who lost her husband to COVID this week. Uh, we pray for Jill's friend, Sandra, who is in the hospital with double pneumonia following a major surgery. And we pray for Sarah LaMonica's daughter, Jill, and son-in-law, Rob, for healing from health issues and for Marilyn Henderson, whose cancer has returned. God, there's many joys among us this morning. Um, we have a, a celebration for me and Sam and for Daniel from Peter. Thank you, Peter. Um, thank you, God, for um, enabling and enlivening our ministry. Uh, we celebrate also those who are working with the public during the pandemic for the schools, teachers, uh, administrators, students. Um, we celebrate pickles. God, this is a joy that came out of a mentoring group um, from Timmy and Riley. Uh, we celebrate pickles because they help us feel better and they make us laugh. Um, pickles. Um, and finally, God, for those who've passed away, those who've touched our lives that we've loved so much, we celebrate the life of Susan Holloway, a friend from Old South United Methodist Church who's been on our main mission trip, uh, who passed away this week. Um, we celebrate um, the life of this dog, Louis, a joy for his life, a grief for his passing um, from Sarah Castine, and uh, for Christine's cousin's mother who just passed from cancer. Um, God, we just are so thankful for the home that we have with you and the, the hope of that, uh, but we do ask that you would comfort us as we mourn those who have passed. Um, God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, do you want to know when else I have a, the time went so fast moment? When was that? On Sunday mornings. Sunday mornings. Yeah, hanging out with you guys, talking to the church. Yep. Boom, boom. Just like that. Best hour of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Almost, yeah, yeah, one of them. All right, Daniel, you're coming back? I'm looking for you. I wonder, does that ever happen to you, Daniel? Like when you start playing, do you like then look up at the clock and like it's an hour later? Yeah, it happens with a lot of things. It's probably my favorite feeling in life. It's just getting lost in something. Forgetting yourself. Awesome. Yeah. All right. God bless you guys. Have a good week. All right, Sam, this one's for you. Uh, hopefully, I, it's a nice throwback. If any man come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me into life eternally. Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life. If any man come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me into life eternally pick up yourself deny yourself and follow jesus he is the way the truth the lie